Taiwan's mountains are home to countless animals, giving the island incredibly diverse wildlife. In today's Sunday special report, we're going to focus on one particularly striking mammal, the yellow-throated martin, which is like a weasel and is protected in Taiwan. Conservationists have gone to great efforts to track down wild populations and monitor their health amid concerns over dwindling numbers. Let's see what they've been doing. We rarely see such colorful mammals in the wild. It's got black fur, but also very eye-catching yellow. It looks like a cat, but also looks like a fox. It often stands on its hind legs, which it does to make itself taller, so it can survey its surroundings. It observes things. This adorable little creature is the yellow-throated martin. Its dazzling yellow fur captures attention. When you see it, you'll grab your camera at once, and you'll want to follow it to capture more images. You'll wear yourself out following it, camera in hand. It's very nimble and smart, and will turn back to look at you while you follow it. The yellow-throated martin darts throughout the forest like a flash of lightning. Obstacles are no match for it. It can follow the guardrail, leaping between reflectors for several hundred meters. Everyone wonders why it doesn't get struck down. It's because it can jump so well. The yellow-throated martin may be cute, but it is an aggressive animal. Wildlife photographer Gao Shoucheng once captured images of two martins killing a much larger Reeves muntjac before dragging the animal away. The mountain forests are a place of constant ecological change. The once dwindling yellow-throated martin population has been slowly growing since 2017. The yellow-throated martin is a protected species in Taiwan. In other countries, it is a threatened species. However, both in Taiwan and abroad, there is relatively little research information about the species. In 2019, the Yushan National Park Administration commissioned a private conservation company to tag and track yellow-throated martins for research. The company set about placing traps in the forest to catch the animals for tagging. When we chose a place to set the traps, we need to find somewhere with shelter from the wind. This spot right here is well protected from the wind. We also can't choose a place that's too exposed because after the martin is in the trap, we have to ensure it's kept warm and safe. Every time we pour out some honey, the martins appear, so we realize that these yellow-throated martins really love honey. Honey is used for bait and trees nearby are coated with an artificial scent to attract the martins. Automatic cameras are then installed nearby. With five traps now in place, all that's left is for the researchers to wait patiently. After a night of waiting, the team receives some good news. They return to the mountain early in the morning, ready to retrieve martins from three of the traps. At 8.30, we discovered the sudden appearance of a yellow-throated martin's tail. We went into the trap and later, we realized it was a particular martin we wanted to catch. On the screen, the yellow-throated martin can be seen getting lured into a trap by honey. It goes in and out of the trap, snacking on the honey, before finally getting locked inside. The researchers hurry back to retrieve the trap. Yeah, <laughs> Veterinarian researcher Zhong Jiaheng is excited to discover an old friend in one of the cages. This yellow-throated martin, tagged with the number 18, is Xiong Mei. 
Xiaomei was one of a small number of Martins to have a GPS-equipped collar attached. In October 2021, she was captured and released, but researchers didn't see her again after that, until she was finally caught again, one year later. The researchers downloaded her GPS tracking data, giving them new insight into the daily patterns of a female yellow-throated Martin. A Martin is shot with a blowgun dart, rendering it unconscious for an hour and allowing the researchers to give it a full checkup. The newly caught Martin is fitted with a collar and injected with a microchip. We look at its kidney and liver and check its red and white blood cells to make sure everything is normal. We also look for signs of disease such as canine distemper and canine parvovirus. The researchers have caught and released more than 30 martins over the past four years. The newest among them are a female they named Xiao Wen with the tag number 32, and a male named Xiao Jidan with tag number 33. When the researchers recaptured Xiao Mei recently, they made a surprising discovery. She was lactating. She had signs of lactating. Do you remember we saw her with a mate last year? She must have conceived. A year on, and Xiong Mei is a mother. After quickly finishing their test, the researchers let her go. Xiong Mei, you're going to go home. I'm going to go home. Xiong Mei is released and disappears without a trace. Xiao Wen is also released but hesitates, looking left and right at her surroundings. Before returning to their habitat in the forest, the martins are fitted with collars equipped with transmitters. The research team can now track them with a high-frequency antenna. One of the captured males named Tian Tian by the team was fitted with a GPS tracker eight months ago. The team looks at the data points detailing Tian Tian's movements, shown as pink dots on a map. Over the course of eight months, his movements covered a radius of more than 130 square kilometers, half the area of Taipei. Impressive for such a small animal. Yin Limin is an experienced researcher who has worked in Yushan National Park for nearly 30 years. Her life and research are closely tied to the park. There is a thick growth of bamboo here, so sambar deer will likely be active in this area. Several times while I was walking nearby, I looked up and saw sambar looking at me from behind bamboo. Twelve years ago, Yin came up with an idea of going on evening patrols. From 4.30 p.m. when her work ends to 7.30 p.m., she heads out with her single-lens reflex camera, walking along the Tataka Trail. Yin says she occasionally encounters wild animals during her walks and is not deterred by wind or rain. So far, she's recorded over 8,000 such encounters. There are some who are just like my friends. I bump into them after work every one to three days. There is one male Reeves Muntjac that I have known for five years now. I have numbered some of the animals from 1 to 30. What's special about this information is that in the future we can use it to see at a glance which animals typically appear along which trails. If we accumulate this data, in the future it will be helpful in the management of the whole national park. Aside from her love for photography, Inn is also an amateur artist. One pencil stroke at a time, images of yellow-throated martins and samba deer come to life on the page. It's very fun. It's just going to the tree. 
我觉得它真的是有那种轻功的感觉。In recent years, the yellow-throated marten has become a favorite art and photography subject of Eanes. She has captured images of the marten eating an apple, eating from a waste bin, and chewing on a plastic bag. 不管他对人类的食物有没有兴趣，可是他对于不同的气息。Whether it's interested in human food, I'm not sure, but it's very curious about different odors. This may have a negative impact on its health condition. It's something we are paying very close attention to. When the yellow-throated marten eats waste left out in the wild, it chews apart packaging and may end up swallowing bits of plastic. Waste in the wild is a major concern for conservationists. Martens, macaques, macaco pheasants, and other animals eat waste they find and end up swallowing pieces of plastic. Waste that ends up in the diet of wildlife threatens their survival, and it can even end up further along in the food chain. Conservationists hope that through raising public awareness on the issue, they can help protect Taiwan's wild animals and the environment.